Hi, in this video, I'll give you my reasons for buying the Hollywood Rack Destination e-bike rack, a new bike that came out, uh, or new rack, that came out in around May of uh, 2022. Uh, my observations, a few mistakes during assembly, overall first impressions. This is not a sponsored video. I bought the rack with my own money, so these are my honest opinions. First of all, I'm not a professional YouTube reviewer, so there's going to be better assembly and feature videos out there. Hollywood racks themselves uh, have about a five minute assembly video, which is great in addition to a pretty solid set of instructions. Uh, so this video, I will try to give you a couple of key things up front that you may not get in some other videos. First is a comparison chart where I'll tell you why I bought this rack compared to some others. So these are some of the other uh, e-bike rack contenders under $1,000 that I considered. When you look at the chart, you can see that the Destination E has one of the highest weight capacities at 70 pounds per bike. Uh, only one better is the Hollywood Sport lower quality uh, e-bike rack, and I'll tell you why I didn't get that. Uh, it's got a decent overall weight of the rack itself. Most of them are competitive, except for the Hollywood Sport rack is pretty heavy at 58 pounds. Uh, I really like the clamping method, the combination of the clamps on the frame or the seat post mount as well as the three different tire straps uh, really hold the bikes lock solid. It's, it's really impressive how solid the bikes are. Uh, the ramp included was one of the longer ramps that was included. Um, Thule has a ramp that from most of the reviews I've saw is just too short to be effective. And then you have to buy a more, uh, an, another optional accessory to get a longer ramp. Uh, same up one up USA, uh, you have to buy their accessories separately. Uh, it's got a very nice tilt function, really tilts the bikes far downs for hatches or, or, or uh, truck hitches. And it's got one of the biggest uh, tire width capabilities. A lot of the e-bikes are, are more on the fat tire size. Uh, this one can take up to four and a half inches right out of the gate. Uh, most of the other ones uh, can eventually get there, but they need either accessory straps or other accessories that you have to purchase separately that add to the price. Um, it cannot add more bikes. Uh, the only one on my list that could do that is the One Up USA. Uh, and it's got a very competitive price uh, compared to a lot of these. Uh, the, really the only cheaper one of significance is the, the lower level Hollywood sport bike rack, which is also uh, very popular. One thing I'll say is um, if you didn't have a fender mount issue, uh, where a lot of these e-bikes, especially cruiser style, have fenders, uh, then I think 1UP USA Super Duty uh, with a 75 pound capacity, it looks like it's built like a tank, gets great reviews. It's probably uh, an incredible rack, but I really wanted something uh, that didn't clamp down on the tires. If I have fenders, uh, not knowing what kind of bikes I'm going to get in the future, I wouldn't have to worry about fender interference. So that, that kind of ruled out the 1UP USA for me. Another great feature that doesn't get a lot of advertising, Hollywood Racks, if you buy from their website, has a 20% discount for military, including veterans and dependents, uh, first responders and teachers. Uh, so when you're looking at a $700 bike rack, uh, saving $140 is a, is a pretty big deal and can really make it cost competitive compared to some of the other models. Okay, you have one little hiccup. After you insert hit pin, or actually before you insert the hit pin, make sure, first of all, this handle, make sure it's threaded all the way to the back and push it all the way up before you insert the hit pin. Then insert the hit pin, and this is what allows it to tighten, because when you tighten this, it's essentially pulling this mechanism back towards this pin. And if this is in the wrong position, it wouldn't do that. And eventually, the full assembly tightens up, and this is the anti-wobble. Yep, that's in there pretty good. Okay, so we're going to do these two straps. Unlock the levers. Rotate this whole thing upward. Relock the lever in the upward position and then redo these straps. Alright, so this is the other part of the main assembly. Pretty easy hole alignment here.
All right, next time I did this, made a mistake of forgetting to put these wheel chocks in before I tighten these bolts. So I'll do that. Take those four out. These are part of the top assembly. Put that in. Wiggle it around a little bit. Uh, when you tighten these down, it'll be the ones on the outside first. They do not require a washer because there's a stronger backing plate on the back. So these are just locking nuts right on. I'm using a half inch wrench, I don't know if it's a metric or, or standard, but uh, I use their little Allen and I'm using a half inch socket to tighten them down. And then I've already loosened this up, you have to flip this up to get access to the back ones. And inside is where you get the uh, washer because this is just the uh, aluminum tubing. Alright, so before I try to put the bike on, I'll rotate this clamp and secure it. This should prevent me from tilting this, so this is nice and solid now. And now I've got I got two bikes. I got a road bike and I got a folding bike. You don't really buy this particular bike rack for a uh, road bike, but I have one out, so this will be simple. I can simply lift it up. Uh, so the way it's mounted, the inside rack, the front wheel goes to the left. That's where the uh, extra wheel chalk is. So this is a, probably a 20 pound bike. I'm just going to lift it up. I'm not sure how critical pedal position is. Probably a little bit better to keep them out of the way of the rack. And then, I haven't even read the instructions on this, but I believe you're going to loosen this up enough to where it can grab the frame. Now, I did read, because my other road bike, this is my wife's bike, my other road bike is a carbon frame bike. I think she probably wants this one down and set up. It says, causes you not to use this for a carbon frame. I think the rationale is that if you squeeze this clamp too tight, you risk uh, cracking the carbon frame they're a little more sensitive. Um, I think you can probably get away with just not over tightening it. For now, this is pretty easy. This is just unscrew and screw back in. I guess the combination of this tightening tightens both the mount on the arm as well as the mount against the bike. And I don't think this has to be super tight, personally. It's going anywhere. And on top of that, I think you can figure this out without instructions. Looks pretty easy. So this is going to come from the other side. Go through there, watch my chain. Let's break right through here. And then you use a little rubber padding to prevent any damage. Wheel. Now I think it probably said to do the front wheel first. Uh, so let's see if we can get away with doing the back wheel first. Pulling that kind of tight. This one I think is extra long and it rotates up. So I think it will even accommodate uh, fat tires up to four and a half inches, is what I believe I read on the spec. This is obviously not a challenge being a thin road bike tire. Yeah, this goes upside down. So let's unscrew this. Why that clamp is coming out. Now, if you use, use the same bikes, I'm sure the position of the clamp, position of the rubber on the wheel chuckle, become consistent. 
This is already feeling pretty rock solid here. There's a ramp. All you have to install is this little uh, end clamp. Slides out. Tighten it up. I've not looked at the instructions on this, but it looks well. So the ramp's going to go on this end. I'm going to have to move this stuff out of the way. Alright, I will say the, uh, the ramp, uh, because it's front tire with the two straps, Goes on the left side for the outside bike, right side for the outside bike. So it's not, you know, choose your side. It's really based on which side the double straps are for the front tire. So on the outside bike, so keep that in mind when you're loading. And this is my uh, the Han folding bike. And I have a 4x4 pickup truck, so this is near the worst case scenario. It's not lifted, but it's a pretty tall rack setup once you uh, look at the hitch height. Now I can get hitch adapters for reducers, but it's not too bad. And I think with an electric bike, a lot of them have the, um, the assist feature that helps you walk them up. So I think that'll probably work pretty good. Stays in the channel pretty easily. And then here's the deal with this bike. So this bike I have, I'm going to use the seat post as the mount. I'll probably pick the wrong location for the first mount. I'm going to have to fix that before I finish doing this. Alright, so I moved the first mount a little over to the right. So I can get the second bike. And you can take these clamps on and off to uh, remove this little strap. I'm going to actually place this in the ideal spot. And to the seat post. And screw this. Now this part of the frame is, is way too thick and they don't advise you to try to clamp down to one of these thick rectangular type frames. I know one of the uh, popular electric bike companies is electric with an L. And they have a, a really thick rectangular frame as well. So this one's going to tighten down. I don't know if these plastic parts, how much you can wrench on this, but I think you can hit it pretty good. I missed the uh, video clip at the end, but I have this uh, time lapse that shows me lowering the bikes to the extended position and then raising them. It's really amazing how rock solid the bikes are, even in the lowered position. I will say if you have a truck, at least my truck, Nissan Titan 4x4, uh, the tailgate would open and it would clear the bikes, uh, but it would not open fully. It would basically sit on top of that uh, pivot point at the top of the rack inside the bikes. Uh, I think for hatchbacks or SUVs and stuff, that's not a concern. I think they fully clear. And even for a truck, you can buy a hitch extension adapter that will also lower the hitch uh, by a couple of inches if you really want to be able to fully open uh, your tailgate and stand or walk on it. Overall, my impressions of the rack are it's outstanding. I think at the price point for the features, for the weight capacity, uh, it's a really well-built rack. If you can take advantage of that 20% discount for military first responders and teachers, uh, that really knocks it out of the park. But uh, I can highly recommend this rack.